All right, so this session is GitHub and Azure DevOps better together. We're going to be discussing the two platforms, how to use them most effectively combined, and a little bit about the strategies around what's happening with GitHub and Azure DevOps. There's a lot of confusion going on in the industry right now about that. And so we're going to take a minute and also review that as part of this. So to start this off, I am Ken Muse. I am the consulting director at Wintelect. If you're not familiar with Wintelect, we provide consulting, instructor-led and on-demand training, and managed services offerings. We are a GitHub verified partner, a DevOps fast track provider. Myself, I'm an Azure MVP and an ALM DevOps Ranger. If you have heard of us, it's usually because we wrote the book on many of the topics your developers are dealing with today. So the real challenge started actually years ago as Microsoft and GitHub started working together. If you've been using Azure DevOps, you might have seen pretty early on the ability to be fully integrated with GitHub. So we could take our builds from GitHub, or we could do a build off of our code in GitHub, and we could move it through our systems very quickly and effectively, doing the build, then pushing it out to do a release. A couple of years ago, Microsoft acquired GitHub, and that's really when the questions began. Everyone started wondering, what does this mean? Is the direction Azure DevOps or is it GitHub? It was pretty clear that because Microsoft GitHub bought GitHub, there was something big of value there. But with a product as well-known and well-respected in the industry as Azure DevOps, it left a lot of questions as to what is the direction, which tool do we use, where should we put our investments going forward? And so in this session, I'm going to try to help you to understand where the investments are, what's going on, and how you can make the most of this opportunity with Microsoft having the two leading products in this space. So there's a few things we want to know. First things first, Azure DevOps is not going away. Microsoft is continuing to invest in this product. As you can see from a, a recent screenshot I've got here, they are actually continuing to publish and define new features for the product and continuing active development. This is both for the cloud and the on-prem solution. Should Microsoft at some point in the future decide to eliminate Azure DevOps, it would be because everything's unifying with GitHub, there would be a path forward. And like most Microsoft products, you get a very long tail to that process. There's a five to 10 year support that comes after the announcement that things are gonna be uh, end of life. And so consequently, an investment in Azure DevOps right now is definitely not something that's at risk. The product continues to be built and evolve, and Microsoft has announced no plans to eliminate it. At the same time, GitHub is not going away either. Very similar to Azure DevOps, they're publishing an active roadmap and are actively developing lots of new features. In fact, probably the biggest thing to know is that Microsoft has actually merged the two teams. It's a real clear sign of what's to come. Microsoft is seeing both of these as a joint uh, part of the solution. At the moment, each of these has its particular audiences, but over time, we fully expect they're gonna come together because Microsoft likes to have one solution that meets the needs of their audience. So today, each of these solutions has certain areas of strength that they play to, that we can take advantage of. To that end, it's worth knowing, Microsoft continues to remain committed to both of these products. And so with them being invested in both products right now, 
that means that we don't have to choose one or the other. We can actually take advantage of this and opt to use both. We might consider this approach if either we want to take advantage of some of the features that are native to GitHub, some of the advanced capabilities that it offers, or if we need some of the build, release, planning, and workflow management that comes as part of Azure DevOps. By being able to pick the product that works best for us or combine the two, it means that we can make the process about what uh, brings our teams forward, what drives innovation within our organizations. So to really understand how we can incorporate more of these features, let's look a little bit at what are the features provided by each of these two systems, because that makes it easier to see where we might consider drawing the line. And if you need all of the features that are just in one product, you can certainly choose one product. If you need features in both, you'll be able to pick from both, and the two can combine together rather seamlessly, which I'll show you a little later in this presentation. And over time, as the two begin to come together more, you're going to see more strategies emerging as to how you can more tightly integrate the two or eventually transition items from one to the other seamlessly. Let's start with GitHub. GitHub has about 50 million users around the world. About a million and a half of those are students and over 100 million repositories hosted on the platform. Basically, what that means is that if you're hiring developers today, they have more than likely touched, used, or depended on something that came from GitHub. If they're a web developer, they've almost certainly used NPM, which is a GitHub product now because of the acquisition that recently occurred. Now, just because everyone's doing it isn't always the only reason to go with a product. GitHub offers a number of features that really help to differentiate them from the market. Coming from a place of being repositories and source control, they've made this among the most advanced solutions in the world for managing and organizing your code. More importantly, they've added advanced security to the process to help ensure that you can bring DevSecOps into your processes. The advanced security solution provides things like code scanning, finding if you have secrets in your code, finding out if you have dependencies that may, may be exploitable, identifying potential security vulnerabilities. If you haven't signed up for it, it's definitely worth checking out these features because through tools like Dependabot and the security analysis, the graph uh, analysis of your code base. You get automatic notifications warning you when one or more of the dependencies in your project may have a security vulnerability that could affect you. Those security alerts get emailed to you automatically. The announcements get posted in the repo for all of your participants to be able to help remediate. And if you're taking full advantage of Dependabot, it has the ability to automatically create a pull request updating out-of-date vulnerable components. So in this case, uh, showing that we're bumping the dollar project from version 1.3 to 1.4. This makes it very fast, very easy for us to take advantage of the security functionality to make sure that our code isn't easily exploitable. This also means we get a level of supply chain management. By having GitHub analyzing those dependencies, if they're exploited, if someone introduces a new vulnerability, if someone replaces the code with more dangerous code, since many of these packages are hosted publicly, we can quickly get an alert and begin to remediate. Additionally, if we discover issues in our own code, 
we can choose to create a CVE and publish that out so people dependent on our SDKs and our code bases can begin to remediate and update their dependencies, taking advantage of these exact same features. GitHub has integrated directly to the CVE database, and so they are able to publish these security warnings making it very easy to centralize that communication chain to your consumers and customers. Going further, another acquisition of GitHub, uh, Simul brought in the ability to do CodeQL. CodeQL allows us to create a code base which specifically analyzes our code for exploits, for issues, for potential defects. By writing scripts in CodeQL, we can quickly analyze our code base to identify potential vulnerabilities and then begin to remediate them. The language itself is optimized for many of the more common languages and platforms we use today. There's a number of open source scripts that help to identify some of these vulnerabilities and to encourage adoption there's even some programs where if you create a script that can identify a vulnerability in a published repo, there's actually rewards for being able to help other participants in the community find vulnerabilities using this uh, technology. So CodeQL gives us a way to protect our code and potentially to protect the code that others create to ensure that what we're delivering to our end customers is of the highest quality and provides the lowest risk. If you're doing a lot with Git repositories, you've also probably noticed that you frequently set them up the same way. That is, you may start with the same folder structures. You may want work items processed in the same way, issues logged a certain way, security defects handled a specific way. To assist you with this, GitHub provides the concept of repository templates. These templates include things like automatic issue definitions or PR templates. This means that if I go to create an issue or make a feature request, I can have guided processes that help make sure the right data is being collected so that I can actually act on the issue or act on the feature request quickly and easily. I can also publish things like contribution guidelines. Now, setting all this up can become cumbersome for larger organizations where we may want to put licenses and guidelines directly in the repository. And so we also have the ability in GitHub to create a template repository a repository that's specifically organized to be the baseline that's used for creating all other repositories from that time on. So I can create a repository, configure it exactly as I want, and any new repositories created after that point will have the same folder structure, the same code, the same guidelines as this template. That makes setup quick and easy. Another feature in here that's recently been exposed is a concept of a special file repository called the dot .files repository. A dot .files repository is simply a collection of scripts or code that can be deployed automatically into an environment for you. This means that if I've got configurations that I as an end user want to make sure will exist in my environment every time I start developing, I can create a dot .files repository that gets automatically applied. It gets pulled into my environment for me, providing those scripts and tools automatically. And that really leads us into the next big feature that is currently in preview with GitHub, and that's code spaces. Now, it's been touted as Visual Studio Code in the browser, but really it goes beyond that. It is a complete development environment in the browser. It has the ability to integrate with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or be a fully browser-based environment. I can actually configure 
the backing environment through Docker files, scripts, and commands in my repo to set up exactly the kind of environment I'm going to need to begin developing on my project. This means that developers that are getting their code from GitHub have the ability to jump right in and begin coding without having to spend time setting up or configuring an environment. And this ties directly to the dot files concept I was just mentioning. Because if I've got things that are unique to me, scripts, tools, functionality I like to have, my development environment isn't complete just to have a working environment that compiles, builds, and runs the code. My environment also needs my scripts and tools. Code Spaces, when it creates the environment for the developers, automatically pulls in your .files repository and makes that a part of the environment. So your development environment is just that, your development environment. It's a it combination can. of the definition of what it takes to get the, uh, the code down and hit the ground running, debugging immediately with all of your tools. And can. by being able to pull that individual studio directly, it means I also have the advantage that I can connect my Visual Studio directly to the repository and begin building and debugging the code without having to spend any time setting up an environment. Another feature that gives us some power with our source control in GitHub is graphs. The ability to see who's doing what in our repository, what's happening, who's interacting, what are they doing in the repository? How active have they been? How many commits, merges, changes are we seeing? And if we're adopting an inner source model, are we seeing that code really uh, getting adopted, forked, and merged back in by other participants in our community? We get to adopt some of the best practices from the open source world and analyze them all in one place. This makes it significantly easier to understand are our teams really able to deliver the kind of value we're hoping for? So the final aspect of GitHub's that I want to discuss is GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions brings yet another piece of functionality into the picture. If you've worked with Azure DevOps before, then you may be familiar with the approach, the YAML pipeline. And the history, the background of these two is very similar. GitHub actually built this partially on the same framework. And so this gives us the ability to do very advanced scripting and workflow that builds and deploys our code. But GitHub Actions takes it a step further. It's not just about your code. GitHub Actions adds the ability to put workflow around your interactions and processes in GitHub. Beyond just triggering on what happens in the repo, it can trigger on almost any other event that happens in GitHub itself. Consequently, I can drive actions, drive changes based on what's happening in my GitHub environment, based on tags, based on issues, based on certain activities that have occurred. And this is extensible as part of the GitHub apps model where I can add on additional external services that interact with this process. The actions themselves in GitHub are actually published and available themselves from a repository. Consequently, the code for the actions is also open source, is pulled in and executed. This does mean that if you want to secure those, you will need to fork those repositories into your own if you want to guarantee exactly what's being run at any given time and don't trust the source. If you trust the source and that they secure their repos properly, for example, working with Node.js, then of course you can consume those actions directly. The marketplace for this is in the tens of thousands with more coming each day. 
And because it's open source, it makes it very quick and easy to get started building additional actions. So with all of this in mind, there's a ton of features and functionality that GitHub brings that we just don't see with other tools. But the same can be said for Azure DevOps. And so we'll go through a few of those because Azure DevOps is one of the most highly used enterprise development environments in the industry today. Microsoft themselves has adopted it for all of their teams, a further commitment that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And as of July last year, they were doing hundreds of millions of executions per day with hundreds of thousands of internal users, deployments, and millions of commits. This level of activity means that it continues to be a robust environment for enterprise type development. But given all the functionality and features that GitHub brings to the table, what features in Azure DevOps might have additional value or be worth consideration? Some of those are dashboards. Dashboards allows us a way to integrate together the analytics of what's happening both in our Azure DevOps environment, in our internal environments, or in our production environments, putting all of those facts, figures, and details together in one place where the team can see everything quickly and easily. All of these items are clickable, so I can drill down and go directly to that environment to begin acting on it. So here you're actually seeing where one of my dashboards is monitoring a production environment, analyzing page load times, daily requests, response time. You can see that some exceptions were generated that needed someone to take a look at. You can see how many work items are outstanding, how many bugs, how much end user feedback. And if I was to click on any of those in my dashboard, I could jump right to those and begin acting on them. And dashboards are expandable. If you know HTML and JavaScript, you can integrate it to your own platforms and bring your secret sauce into the mix. What makes your company unique can be surfaced here and the metrics and KPIs that bring value to you and your customers can be brought forward and made visible to everybody on your team. Another area that is frequently used and is high value is the boards and backlog, the planning environments. Whether it's Kanban style planning, doing sprint planning, backlog grooming, forecasting, Azure DevOps was built from the ground up to support your workflow and your process. It is an integration platform first and foremost. Consequently, while it has a number of these processes out of the box, they're all customizable and extensible. You can also integrate them with your own solutions to make them more valuable to you and your teams. The UIs are extendable, the processes are extendable. This means that if I'm needing to do deep sprint planning, if I'm wanting to do Kanban boards, if I've got a waterfall process that I'm in the middle of trying to change and grow, I can deal with it through the boards and backlog functionality and execute on my planning and deployments through centralized dashboards. This makes it very easy to manage the overall team processes and workflows from a single place and to promote visibility amongst the teams. I can even go a step further. If I have multiple teams, I can configure these individually for the teams while still allowing the details to roll up to the executive management team or an oversight team. In fact, I can even roll them up into plans, which give me a high level view of what's coming over time. All of these components, the work items, the, uh, the various workflows that are occurring, the burn downs are also exposed through analytics. OData endpoints that you can connect to to build custom reporting solutions. 
If you came from the world of TFS, you were used to trying to integrate to a data warehouse. With Azure DevOps, we have an OData endpoint, JSON over HTTP, which integrates natively to Power BI, to Excel, to .NET, to Java, to SAP, so that you can pull reports and understand what's happening in your system. You can take the details being presented on these screens and surface them into your own code bases and into your own dashboards outside of Azure DevOps. So we get this ability to drill down into what's going on in our development process. We also have one of the most advanced release management systems on the market available through this. It allows us to create uh, complete workflows that move our code from being in a repository through the build phase and then deploying it to one or more environments, including executing any sort of automated tests we need in the cloud. By being able to take advantage of this, at any time, I can see what was deployed, when was it deployed, who deployed it, or what process automatically deployed it. Were there any issues? What did the logs show me at the time of the deployment? I can even roll back. And so if I need to be able to step back an environment, I can do that either automatically through these workflows or manually through redeployment. With the new environment functionality, I can also examine what is the history of the changes to that environment, giving me much better governance and compliance. Release management gives us that end-to-end -end visibility, which helps with uh, the governance and compliance story in our organizations. And to that end, Compliance and governance isn't complete unless we really have the ability to automate more of the decision-making. Do we require people to approve releases into environments or coming out of environments? Do we need specific gates to be met in order to release into an environment? That is, do I need to make sure there aren't active critical bugs? If there are, then I need to block any releases to production. Do I need to check some APIs that are doing external validation? Do I want to take advantage of Azure Monitor if I'm using Azure to be able to determine if my smoke test was performant? Because if my code's performing well, then I can feel assured that my customers will have a good experience as it rolls out. I can pick and choose from these different release management gates so I can automate my practices. And that way, instead of everything being dependent on somebody taking an action, I can begin focusing on what brings value and automating away the manual processes and manual steps. This level of control means that we can focus more of our time on what brings value. And like every other part of Azure DevOps, this is extensible. And so we can add custom features and functionality into these panels if we've got specialized checks that we need to see occur before releases can take place. Another big area of Azure DevOps that a lot of teams can take advantage of, especially if they have an active uh, QA team or exploratory test team, is manual testing. The ability to do test planning, test case management, and test execution from a single centralized environment. This is a functionality that is native to Azure DevOps, integrates directly into the boards and backlog planning, and if you haven't tried it out, integrates with a native browser plugin that supports exploratory testing. In fact, that exploratory test plugin can be used to create bugs on the fly and it can be used to build test cases with screenshots just by simply walking through the same steps your end user would do. It will document what was on the screen, where did you click, what did you type, and what were the steps you took, allowing you to focus on simply refining the test case at the end 
and then configuring it for easy execution in the future. If you're moving to an automated test practice, which is highly recommended as part of a healthy DevOps flow, this also becomes a great way to start out cataloging what are you doing today by hand that could be automated tomorrow. And as you start to automate, eliminating manual tests. If you need this kind of functionality, this is where Azure DevOps can shine. You'll also notice that Azure DevOps is highly GUI driven. And as I mentioned, it is very much a platform around integrations. And so to that end, it has a very broad marketplace for extending the GUI and adding additional functionality into it. So if you're looking to bring in your own tools, your own uh, techniques, if you're trying to integrate in third-party solutions that bring value or help you deliver value faster, you can go into the marketplace and quickly add these components into your Azure DevOps environment. Or by simply clicking in the corner, you can choose to build your own and potentially make those available to other people in the marketplace as well. This means you can truly make the experience in Azure DevOps unique to your company. Up to this point, I've talked about the two different tools and the strengths and advantages each one independently has. And so, the last part of this discussion, I want to walk through what about bringing them together? What does that integration look like? And it really begins with having two must have apps installed, depending on which components you want to take advantage of. If you're not familiar with GitHub apps, these are integrations into GitHub that interact with the GitHub events very similar to actions, and can take action based on that in other systems. This allows us to fully integrate any two systems together because we can integrate into Azure DevOps, pushing events from Azure DevOps to GitHub, and we can integrate into GitHub, pushing events from GitHub back to Azure DevOps. A two-way conversation between the platforms. The Azure Boards app gives us that conversation with the Agile planning tools, boards, backlogs, the integration between when I check in my code and how I want to relate it to the specific work items at hand. And the Azure Pipelines app is focused on giving you that integration to both the build and release management components of Azure DevOps and bringing those integrations back around into GitHub where we can see the results and act on those as another event. And that can possibly advise our approach to how do we now deal with a pull request, for example. And so to that end, I'm going to actually show off part of this integration in action. So to begin with, I have a simple repo. You'll notice that it's out on GitHub. This particular repo has a simple .NET app in it. The application just simply puts Hello World in a browser. Very simple uh, microservice. But my environment is actually fully integrated with Azure DevOps. I've installed the build and the planning apps into my GitHub environment, which means that I can choose to connect Azure DevOps to this environment quickly and easily. And if I come over here to Azure DevOps and go into the project settings, and there's a feature here called GitHub Connections. GitHub Connection allows me to create that relationship between this Azure DevOps environment and that GitHub repo. And it's as simple as doing new connection. I click Connect. It's going to fetch the accounts that I have privileges to. 
And it's going to allow me to then dive into those organizations and begin to select things within the org that I want to tie it to. And I can tie the repositories directly into my Azure DevOps repo or into my Azure DevOps project, making it very easy to interact between the two systems. Once the two are connected, that conversation is a two-way street. I can choose to integrate with it on the GitHub side or in Azure DevOps. So what I'm gonna do is walk through a simple scenario where I'm gonna take advantage of this. Because the two are connected, I'm going to decide that I wanna manage my issues directly through the boards and backlogs inside of Azure DevOps. Now, what this means is that because I'm managing it inside of here, when I do code changes in GitHub, I'm gonna to wanna to see these updated to reflect those changes. Similarly, as the process moves forward in GitHub through pull requests, I'm gonna to wanna to see that reflected as part of this uh, repository or as part of this overall flow. So in this environment, I'm using a repository in GitHub and boards and backlogs in the Azure DevOps that I've connected to that GitHub environment. And I'm gonna create a task. And this task is gonna be called update on-screen message. So I'll save this task, 1662. Now on the developer side in the repository, I'm going to go ahead and create a branch for working on this dev 1662. Common workflow, I create a branch specific to the work item and that way all my changes are managed in one place. You may notice I've got this special folder called dev container. Dev container is a code spaces definition that contains all the details needed to create a fully working environment. And I can take advantage of that environment just simply by clicking code, open with code spaces. And that's gonna open up an environment in your browser with code spaces. If it hasn't been deployed, it's gonna build the Docker container for you, deploy your code, pull dot .files in, and you'll be ready to go. If the container was already created and it's gone inactive, then it's gonna start trying to start the container and bring back my entire environment for me to work in. That way I can quickly and easily make changes and work within my project. So we can see that it's still loading up. And now I'm in the source file. And I'm adding the word team into here. Pretty simple change. And we can see that it automatically recognizes that there's a change there. Now, uh, before I begin that or go any further with that, let me go ahead and make sure I'm in the right branch for this. Dev 1662. That way my changes get committed to that branch. And I'm gonna call up this. And instead of using a simple pound sign and the issue number, which would tie it to a GitHub issue, I'm gonna use AB number, Azure Boards. This lets GitHub know that the issue shouldn't be tied or that the chain shouldn't be tied to a GitHub issue, but instead use that Azure Boards integration. So I'm gonna say update message for AB number 1662. I'm gonna stage that and commit it. And I'm gonna actually push it up. Now, best practice, we would actually begin debugging and deploying this long before we push it because we'd wanna make sure that this code is working. The interesting thing about the way Code Spaces works is that we get fully connected to that remote environment, including 
if it's launching a web service such as this one, it can proxy it for us. So I can do my debugging in a separate browser window, fully connected to the environment I'm trying to debug. And I can step through the code and work through any debugging that needs to occur, taking advantage of uh, any of the breakpoints, any troubleshooting I need to have happen. So I'm going to move past that breakpoint. And we can see the code did, in fact, work. Now, as you recall, I pushed that message up. And you'll notice over here in Azure DevOps, the task was updated just because I included AB number 1662 matching the task. And because I'm in another branch, I get the offer to compare and create a pull request. So I'm going to go through the process of a pull request. So I'm going to say that this fixes AB1662. And while we get ready for that, I'm going to actually go over here. And I'm going to show you that we actually have a pipeline configured on this end. I'm using a YAML pipeline. And I'm going to go ahead and start this pull request so you can see it in action that when I create a pull request, because the two are integrated and I have a pipeline configured to look for pull requests, GitHub is going to send that event to the Azure DevOps integration. And that integration is going to automatically kick off the build remotely and provide that detail back into my pull request. This means that I can integrate checks in here where I can say, for example, that unless build compile application succeeds, or unless all checks succeed, this pull request can't move forward. And the magic of that is happening over here in the pipelines environment, where it's actually running through an environment I have configured in Azure DevOps. It's going to go through build and follow through a pipeline that's specifically configured in a YAML script. Now, to make editing that YAML script easier, and you can see uh, I can cancel that, and not successful there. So the two can be quickly integrated and are fully interactive. So I can rerun things, begin executing, and it'll begin flowing through. Let's say it failed because I had forgotten something. I can go ahead and quickly make my change, make an update again, push that up. So going from code spaces in my browser directly into GitHub. And you'll notice it immediately picks up that change from code spaces, and the process will start all over again. When this completes successfully, I'll be able to merge that pull request. And back here in the boards, I can go into my backlogs here. And Go to 1662. And I can actually see those same activities are getting mapped out over here as related work. All of those changes. And as the build's complete, then I'll be able to actually complete my pull request and merge them in. And while that's taking place, Actual definition for Azure DevOps is right here in Azure Pipelines YAML, which says we'll trigger a build anytime we get new code in main, and we'll trigger on pull requests that go through main or dev. 
you'll notice that the code for this looks very similar to the uh, GitHub Actions. The two are very closely related. And so I can take advantage of that. And in fact, if I wanted to do my build entirely in GitHub Actions, I can do that. And then from the build in GitHub Actions, trigger a pipeline in Azure DevOps to complete the release process for me. So I can choose exactly to what level or what degree I want to have that integration between the two. That makes it very easy for us to take advantage of the components of this that make the most sense. Whether it's issues in GitHub, boards and backlogs in Azure DevOps, whether it's building and releasing through the GitHub flow or through Azure DevOps, I have the choice to do what's best for my team at the time. And because the two are so closely connected and integrated, I can easily choose at any time to move my processes from one place to the other while still keeping that singular feel to my workflow. So I'm gonna confirm the merge that fixes AB1662. You'll notice that as it updates, I can see that fixes 1662 came in and my state changed to done automatically. No special effort required on my part to have that two-way integration. So as you can see, this means that whether it's through boards, backlogs, pipelines, test plans, repos, I can pick and choose the components of GitHub and Azure DevOps that bring the most value to the rest of my team. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up. Feel free to uh, put your questions in and I'll uh, start trying to answer as many as we can with the time we have remaining. I do appreciate everyone's attendance today. All right, so the first question I see is with GitHub Actions, why would I need Azure Pipelines integration? Great question. GitHub Actions provides a lot of advantages, but one thing that it lacks is a native integrated release management solution. Now, I'm sure that that's gonna be coming over time, but today we don't get the release management component. And so if you need that release management component, if you're needing to take advantage of the compliance components of that, if you need to be able to automate the approval process, the deployments to the environments, track what changes, that's where Azure Pipelines shines. You can take advantage of the release pipelines in Azure DevOps to get all that functionality. If you don't need all those features, if you're comfortable tracing your release management purely through uh, releasing libraries through GitHub, through package management, or using tags and doing releases through GitHub flow based on tagging. Perfectly viable. It is a great way to manage it in a pure GitHub world. Then yes, you can use GitHub Actions end-to-end -end for CI and CD. It really depends on what you're needing to do and what level of compliance support you need out of the box today. Because the two systems are so tightly coupled, if you're investing in YAML-based builds, that will help you to create some paths forward to make the transition between the two environments easier in the future. And so um, the succinct answer is GitHub Actions and, Pi and Azure Pipelines, it's really what supports the workflow you and your company need. Um, all right. Using V, uh, using, uh, let's see, the next question is, do you have any experience with VFS for Git for a huge code base and does it go well with Azure Pipelines? Um, while I've used LFS with the code base quite a few times, VFS is not one I have yet explored personally with Azure Pipelines. Um, I would need to get back to you on that. If you'd like to reach out to me through Twitter uh, at Atlanta Base or LinkedIn, I'd be glad to follow up with you on that one and uh, uh, take a, a stab at going through a VFS code base and making sure that it behaves. 
VFS, for those who aren't familiar, gives you a virtual file system that you can connect in and automatically download files as you need it. While I haven't personally used it, Azure Pipelines is documented as supporting VFS, and so it should pull down just the components you need as you need it. And I do expect that it does in fact support that well because Microsoft internally uses and developed VFS partially to support the Windows team. So I hope that helps with that, uh, with that question. Any other questions? All right. Um, if we choose to use GitHub self-hosted runners, then how do we manage the infrastructure? Great question. So today, you are forced to manage a lot of it yourself. You can deploy it in Azure as virtual machines, and you have the ability to deploy it on-prem as well. If you've been watching Azure DevOps, you may have noticed that a new feature that came out fairly recently was the ability to be able to take those environments and uh, to be able to automate the growth and management of those environments entirely inside of Azure DevOps. That is, I deploy my agent to a managed, scale set inside of Azure, and Azure DevOps automatically manages it for me. As I was looking through GitHub's roadmap, I noticed that that same feature seems to be on the roadmap uh, for uh, one of the nearer term deliverables. And so I expect we're going to very soon be seeing the same functionality available on GitHub where we can have those self-hosted runners managed for us as VM scale sets automatically in Azure. And so that's going to give you that same level of uh, feature and functionality uh, as part of the Azure experience and as part of the GitHub experience. The idea is that over time, GitHub is really taking on all the same features that you use today in Azure DevOps. Um, can GitHub use Azure AD? The answer to that one is yes. Uh, GitHub has the ability to use SAML integrations with Azure AD, so you can authenticate users through that. However, it's not like Azure DevOps in the sense that with Azure DevOps, that is our single sign-on support. We sign into our Azure AD, and then once we sign in through Azure AD, we move into the environment. In GitHub, we sign in as our GitHub user. That way, our history of contributing our identity of who we are flows with us, but not necessarily our access to those repositories. The integration means that I would sign into GitHub. It would prompt me to then sign in if I'm not already signed in with Azure Active Directory. And any multi-factor authentication would then get applied from Active Directory. And if that completes successfully, then I get access to the organization and its repos as configured in GitHub. And so we can use Azure Active Directory. We just need to be aware it's a little different if we're used to the approach inside of Azure DevOps. Uh, let's see. Next question. Um, let's see, advanced GitHub features available for personal accounts. Uh, a number of the features are available, but not all of them. You do have to have GitHub Pro or higher to begin enabling more of the features and functionality if you're interested in those. Uh, the, the bigger features start to become available with Teams, and if you want the full feature set, GitHub Enterprise. Now, if you're uh, in a company that does have agreements in place with Microsoft, Microsoft is starting to offer the ability to pull GitHub into your enterprise agreements, which means that you can take advantage of GitHub Enterprise and Azure DevOps side by side. If you don't have that, that then it becomes a discussion with GitHub about 
upgrading to Teams or better to GitHub Enterprise to take full advantage of the end-to-end -end offerings. Um, if you, the next question is, if I currently have source in Azure DevOps, will I not be able to use this unless I put my code in GitHub? No, uh, actually the integrations between the two, there are ways to work with both. You actually can pull things over. Obviously, uh, if you're working in Azure DevOps, it depends on what functionality you want from GitHub as to how you'd pull that over and take advantage of it. If you're wanting to do the issue management, for example, in GitHub versus if you're wanting to do the builds in GitHub or the releases through GitHub. You do have the option, if you're using source control in Azure DevOps, because uh, of the nature of Git, we can transfer those details, uh, the Git repository, to GitHub from Azure DevOps, and you can take full advantage of all the functionality of the source control in GitHub that way. So yes, you do have the ability to work with source in Azure DevOps and still use GitHub. The level of integration is up to you. All right. Uh, what was the name of the different kind of repository mentioned for scripts? Uh, that's called a dot .files repository, a D-O-T-F-I-L-E-S repository. It's documented as part of code spaces, and it literally is creating a repository called dot .files, and whatever goes in that, follows you into code spaces. Um, how is Azure DevOps Git? What does it look like when you have GitHub as a repository? Uh, Azure DevOps Git continues to remain fully available to you. But if you're using the GitHub repo, you may not have anything in there. And so consequently, I may go over here to project settings and turn off that. It doesn't delete anything. It just simply hides this so that the next time I refresh or enter into the project, I don't see that repo. And so consequently, I don't get confused as to where do I go for my source control? Uh, is AB number a hard-coded convention we need to use to connect dev spaces to Azure board task numbers? That is the out-of-the-box convention that is natively integrated into that activity. If you have other integrations you want to use, um, the events are available to you. You can trigger off of them and you can take control of that and add in your own conventions, either to integrate into other systems or to change the way you integrate into Azure DevOps. Um, if you are using Azure DevOps with GitHub, I would encourage you to stick with their convention simply because that means that the development effort is with Microsoft and the GitHub team, as opposed to being something uh, that you have to manage and maintain yourself. All right. Next question. Uh, in summary, how did acquiring GitHub add to Azure DevOps? What did Azure DevOps lack? Um, that was really at the, the beginning of this. What it really is adding to the picture is a significantly more advanced source control and security model. Uh, it's adding a system that users or developers are most likely already used to working with, and it adds in code spaces so that you can have a ready-to-go development environment. Over time, it will also add in all of the newest features and investments in the DevOps space, making those available to you. So today, things like boards and backlogs are only available through Azure DevOps. Eventually, I would expect you see all of those in GitHub. And so today, the main things you're getting are GitHub's package management, GitHub's issues and projects, all of the security features, code spaces, and a number of other features and functionality that are really what separate GitHub from the rest of the market. Uh, yes, uh, so th another question here. Things moved very fast. Will a recording be available? Absolutely. We will make a recording available 
uh, after this uh, webinar ends, and you should get that link following the uh, the webinar. Can I talk about the cost impact of using two products? Um, if you have an enterprise agreement with Microsoft, make sure to talk to your account rep. These integrations and the, the step up to this may be available to you for little or no additional cost, depending on what your agreement is. If you're a company that does not have an enterprise agreement, then the costs are additive. You pay for what you use in both platforms. Consequently, as you enable the various features in each platform that do cost money, you would pay for those. If you're not using the priced out features or if you're able to stay within the free tier, then it becomes free. Uh, when do deployment and releases from pipelines, uh, how is uh, deployment different from release? I think what may be uh, getting asked there is, how do we differentiate the CI and CD side, the build and the release? The concept we have with release management is essentially, I want to have some level of compliance, some level of governance over how my product rolls out to one or more environments. And I wanna automate that rollout. And as it does, I wanna be able to see what rolled out where, when, who authorized it, what code is related to it, and be able to drill down for a given environment through the builds, through the code, even through the work items that were involved in that release. All of those aspects are part of release management that are part of the Azure DevOps release management side. If we're doing continuous delivery, the CD side through GitHub Actions, we have the ability to see what actions executed in GitHub Actions and to trace our changes in the issues through the backlog, through source control there, but we don't have the first class concept exposed today of environments. If you wanted to have that to begin to create that in GitHub, there are APIs available in GitHub so you can add that yourself, but it isn't out of the box today with a nice GUI the way Azure DevOps provides it. And so the release management flow I showed you, the graphical display, the ability to dive in, the ability to select a pipeline and review those deployments or go into environments like I'm doing here and see the history of everything that went into the environment over time, drill into the job that actually put it in the environment, review the changes that were part of that, and drill into the code. This is release management. I can set up all of the approvals and get that end-to-end -end visibility without any further documentation. All right, let's see, any more questions? Uh, can we do code pass using GitHub Desktop? Uh, as far as I know, uh, I believe you're talking code spaces and that is not yet in GitHub Desktop. It is integrated, however, with VS Code, Visual Studio, and natively in the browser. Are there plans to add Azure Dev Test Labs to GitHub Enterprise? To be more specific, what kind of features are going to be available in GitHub Enterprise with regard to Azure Dev Test Labs for managing infrastructure? Um, I'm not aware of any specific plans to integrate or to add that feature to GitHub Enterprise per se, but Azure is directly integrated to both GitHub and Azure DevOps today. You can build, release, manage, and deploy code. You can execute processes directly into Azure DevOps or into Azure, which means that we can take advantage of Dev Test Labs today. If you're referring to it, Azure Dev Test Labs for managing your build infrastructure, you can do some of that today, but it is a manual process. Um, great question from Richard. Is TFVC dead? TFS version control. 
Um, wow, is that a loaded question? Thanks for that one. Um, <laughs> uh, so Team Foundation Version Control, for those who aren't familiar, is a centralized version control management solution. While it is not dead, Microsoft has not officially deprecated it, and it is subject to the full life cycle of the TFS and Azure DevOps environment, which means it's got many, many years ahead of it. It has been a very long time since we have seen any further resources committed to that product or to the features and functionality. In essence, Git has really won the marketplace. Decentralized version control has really taken over as the primary way to manage your code bases. So while it is not dead in the sense of going out of support, there are there does not appear to be any further investment there. And so I would encourage you, if you're still in that environment, start considering the advantages that Git brings to the table and whether it may be time to start looking at a migration from TFVC over to Git. That doesn't mean you have to take that migration today. It doesn't mean that the world is changing tomorrow. But it does mean that you should start trying to look at that because also if you're hiring new developers, odds are they're working with Git and they're using Git and they're comfortable with Git. If you want the developers to be satisfied, they want to work with modern technology. TFS version control and centralized version control in general has largely fallen out of favor. And while it does have its place in the world still, you have the best opportunity to bring on the best resources also if you're considering Git. Um, the last two questions I've got here, uh, I work with government, so working on a GCC platform. Are there issues to expect with GCC that are not in commercial? Um, there's a number uh, of issues around integrations with government platforms just because inherently when you're talking government, government uh, has a number of considerations around where is the data being localized? How are you managing that data? What are you deploying in there? Consequently, that becomes more of an exploration of what are your specific requirements? And based on those, we could go into more easily, what are the issues? Sorry for the vague answer on that one. That's a rather broad question. There can be a lot of challenges anytime government uh, platforms or code bases are involved. Well, Azure DevOps pipeline, is it suited for Java applications? Absolutely. Java, Node, .NET, Python, even PHP, all are first-class citizens in Azure DevOps and also in GitHub. And so both of those have uh, components available that you can use out of the box that are Microsoft uh, supported that you can take advantage of to begin building. And so absolutely you can use Java applications in both environments. And in fact, I do that myself, uh, having come from the SAP and the, uh, the Java world back in the day. Um, how seamless is the migration from my existing system to Azure DevOps and the GitHub combined platform? Um, that really depends. I've seen, depending on the level of integration you have, uh, or the level of uh, depth of how you're using the platform can really influence that. To give you a, a more concrete answer on that, for example, if you're using TFS version control, then we need to look at what does that mean as you move to a get-only world? If you've got existing issues and pull requests, we really need to look at how much of that do we leave behind as history that you can review in the old system, but, or how much of that do we migrate over? Um, moving your CI CD pipelines, there's a number of ways that we can do that that make it significantly more seamless and a lot of great ways to uh, prepare yourself for that. So the level of difficulty really depends on the technologies that we're talking about and what you've done. And that's one of the reasons that the better together approach can be very helpful to you uh, early on is because right now, while 
the deeper integration tools have not yet really hit the market, you can take advantage of both platforms until you're ready to move over, leaving pieces selectively in, in Azure DevOps until they're ready for GitHub or until you decide to make that move. Uh, Richard, thanks for the clarification on uh, the GitHub question about government.github.com. Uh, as far as the as uh, combining that with Azure DevOps, um, I personally do not have uh, experience in that. Um, I know there's a lot of innovation going on in that space. And so uh, I would unfortunately have to uh, get back to you on, on that part of the question in more depth of what are the specific challenges between the government.github.com and Azure DevOps and integrating the two. Um, again, anytime you're dealing with the government environments, it usually means that some of the innovations don't happen as quick, which means that some features may not be as completely available or may have challenges. All right, and uh, final question that we've got. Uh, my current platform is GitLab and AWS. Um, if you're looking at moving from GitLab uh, you've, and continue to use AWS, both Azure DevOps and GitHub support that. And so uh, I would look at the features and functionality that are interesting to you and your team to see where you might take advantage of one or the other. Um, if you're coming greenfield into a solution, uh, knowing that a lot of the investment is on the GitHub side of the fence, I would definitely encourage you to look very hard at how much can you do in GitHub natively that you're doing today in GitLab. Um, if you're wanting to, to keep some of the GitLab functionality, well, then you might look at uh, to what degree do you want to integrate with Azure DevOps since it is an integration platform to allow you to begin stepping things over. Um, that's an additional conversation that we'd be glad to have with you to uh, look at your specific case and uh, and help you to understand what kind of options you might have available for that. Well, we are, uh, looks like uh, about 18 minutes over time. So uh, I do wanna be respectful of everyone's day. Thank you all for joining this uh, webinar. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you'll be getting a follow-up email that gives you uh, ways to reach us. Plus, you can reach out to me directly through Twitter. Thanks again for all the time today. Happy DevOpping and wishing you the best as you find new ways to use Azure DevOps and GitHub better together. Thanks a lot.